God bless you and hello and praise the Lord to all of you. Again, we are here on another Friday, thanking you for joining us for our walk in the Word. It's been a challenging week. We've received reports of many things happening, um, folks losing their jobs and having very interesting encounters with others. And a lot of it is trying not only our will and our faith, but it's also trying our patience. But I just want to remind you just to step back a moment and remember what God tells us about loving our fellow neighbor, our <clears throat> fellow employee, or whatever your situation happens to be. You know, it's easy for us to say we love our family and our children and those close to us, but it's the encounters that we have out in the world that God is looking at. It matters how we respond to people. It really does. And we need to remember that the word tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So in spite of everything that's happening, we have to practice that. We have to be intentional in terms of our relationship and how we encounter others. If they're having problems because they too are going through challenges, we have to step back and take a moment and be the light in the dark place for them. So let us make an effort to be more loving to others that we don't even know. They may be having a bad day. They may need an uplifting word. And we can do that. It doesn't cost us anything. We just have to remember. Our teacher, Elder Milton Andrews, is going to bring us a great message today. And he's going to talk to us about love. And his topic is, what manner of love is this? So enjoy and God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you guys and um, giving God the glory and praise for this wonderful wife of mine who sure enough can speak with music. You know, I just love the tenor in which she speak and which, by which she minister unto us. I thank God, man, because look, me and I have been together for 17 years, 364 days. In less than 12 hours, we would have our 18th wedding anniversary. And man, I am so happy to God for blessing me with this woman to come into my life. She just revolutionized my mind and my thoughts and my surroundings. She brought so much to the table. So today, we're going to talk about love because I got love in the air, you know, just thanking God for being so merciful and full of grace as it pertains to me by bringing such a queen into my life. Let's go to God in prayer and uh, let's see what he has to say today. Precious Father God, we bless you, we praise you, we lift you up because there's nobody like you, Lord. When many, Lord, turn their backs on us, Lord, you were steadfast, unmovable, and you continue, Lord, to bless and to help us in a time of need. God, we lift you up today. We give your name the glory and the praise. We say to you, Lord, there's nobody like you. And we thank you, Lord, for being you, one that can love us, that can look beyond our faults and see our needs, just blessing us continually down through the years. We love you. We praise you. We pray, God, for those listeners, Lord, that they would hear word that would enhance their lives, Lord, that would give them hope to go forth, Lord, trusting and leaning on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord once again, my brothers and my sisters. I want to call your attention to First uh, John 3 and verses 1 and 2. First John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And it reads like this. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, 
we shall be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. I just want to speak to you for the next few minutes on the subject of what manner of love is this. When you think of uh, God, the, the king of the universe, the creator of the universe, looking down on us and loving us, and, and sometimes us can't even love ourselves. When you think of God, I'm not potent, all powerful, omniscient, know everything, I, I, I'm not present, present everywhere, yet to come down from glory to become a man, to save man from his sins, that man may have a right to the tree of life. This is extraordinary love. And like I told you all before, I'm in this sense of love now because I really appreciate what God did for me by bringing this woman of God into my life. But when you think of the God of glory making us sons of God, children of God, I don't want the women to feel slighted because son in this sense means woman and man, boy and girl, children of the most high God. We are right now in the family of God and he has given us hope that he's coming back for us to take us into a place called heaven where there's no pain, there's no no uh, trying to hustle to pay uh, Paul, there's no uh, pain, there's no conflict, there's just eternal bliss. That utopia, that utopia that you and I are seeking to find even on this earth. God is saying, I got a place for you. In my father's house, he said, there are many mansions. He said, I wouldn't have told you that if it wasn't true. And he said, well, I went, I'm gone, but I'm preparing a place for you that where I am, my children, my sons and my daughters, my boys and girls, all of those that are in my body shall be with me forevermore. So this is what we call the blessed hope, you all, this hope of going back with a God who loves us. And today, like no other time, we need to know that there is a God. You know, the next door neighbor may not love us. Uh, our friends may not love us. Even our family turn their backs on us. But the one that counts is God himself. And it's just important that every now and then we stop by and we think about this manner of love that God has for us. What kind of love is this? The Bible says something like this. When, when I consider the heavens and the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? I believe the angels was asking him that thou art so mindful of. And, and brothers and sisters, sometimes you have to personalize this. I, I changed it. I said, who is Milton that God is mindful of me, that God will come down from glory to die for me? And, 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 and you need to know that he died on purpose, y'all. It, it wasn't by happenstance. It wasn't by, you know, a second thought. He purposed to come. He intentionally came for me. Now, I, I, can't, I can't deal with how you see it, but as I look at scriptures and I, as I deal with what God is doing with me and has done with me down through the years, this thing is personal, you all. For the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 4 that according as God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, Come on, my brothers and sisters. Where were you before the foundation of the world? You weren't even, your mama and your daddy hadn't even come together. They weren't even on earth. Your great, great, but he had us in his mind before there was a, a beginning, before he said, let there be a heaven and an earth, before he said, let there be man, God had us in his mind. Now, this is too heavy for me to comprehend. That's why the question today is what kind of love 
that God would have that he would want. Didn't he see the way that I live? Didn't he see my thoughts? Didn't he hear the words that came out of my mouth? But the Bible say him that he foreknew, he predestinated. Foreknew, he knew before time. He knew before the foundation of the world. He knew me. And he knew me and he predestinated me. Me, my destiny was already set. I was going to be a basketball player. I was going to attend college. I was going to go to the left or the right. But God had ordered my steps that I will come to the knowledge of his saving grace and become one of those children of the most high God. He predestinated me. And the Bible says those that he predestinated, he justified. And those that he justified, he called. And those that he called, he glorified. What can we say if God knows since God is for us, who can be against us. That should encourage us today, my brothers and sisters, that regardless of who tried to come against us, we have a God who is an anchor that refuses to move. We can't even make him move. He'll move on us to get us right, but he's going to keep us and hold us to that day that we shall see him face to face. We don't know how he shall appear, the Bible says, but we know that when he do appear, we shall be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. And if you got that hope, the Bible says, those who have that hope purifies themselves, even as he is pure. What hope? I got a hope that I'm going back with my lover, my savior. And because I got that hope, I'm getting my life together today. Because I got that hope, I read this Bible, I study this Bible, and I dot every uh, dot, and I make sure that every T is crossed, that I'm gathering in what this Bible say, because he's coming back, my brothers and sisters, for a church that's ready, not getting ready. A church without spot, without blemish, a holy church, and without such things. Now, that such thing bothered me because I don't know what the such things are. Therefore, I don't have time to look across the street and talk about Brother Joe or talk about Pastor Jim. I got to keep my eyes on me and examine myself that I don't miss this opportunity to go back with the one that loved me and gave his life for me. When we look at the word love, what is love? Well, what's the def uh, uh, by a dictionary defines love as a strong attachment or feeling towards someone. I, I don't even think that you can put love into words. I, it's just something that happens, but it has characteristics. The Bible says in 1 John, I believe 4, it says that God is love. Now, my brothers and sisters, I don't know what definition you're going to take for love, but whatever love is, it caused one to give himself. It compels you to give yourself to the person, the place, or the thing that you are in love with. In other words, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things in the world, for if you love the world, you're going to give yourself to whoever you love. Love compels. You can't love without giving. And that should be a good sign to all of us when people are around us saying they love us and they see us in need and they won't help us. They see us uh, 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 in trouble, won't pray. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. If you love somebody, you got to give yourself to the person that you love. Somewhere between Pentecost and now, we have redefined the meaning of love in the church. We love in word only, but we don't love in deed, which robs the power of what God intended us to have for one another with this thing called love. You know, true story. When I was growing up, my brothers, and they, they schooled me. They say, Melton, say, look, don't you give your money to no women. Don't be buying them no stuff. 
When y'all go, let her pay her half and you pay your half. Man, that made a lot of sense to me. So, man, when I used to go with my, my girlfriend to the movies, I used to meet them there. I have my popcorn in my hand waiting for them to go sit at my seat because I wasn't going to let no woman use and abuse me. My brothers and them told me about this. So, you know, lo and behold, I met me. And Lord, y'all know the story. I fell in love with me. May got the key to my house. She got the key to my car. She got my credit card. She got my bank account, bank, bank account numbers. Why? Because love compelled me to give up everything to her because I loved her. My brothers and sisters, if you're in a relationship and, and you got your own account and they got their own account and everything is separate, y'all missing the beauty of what love is. Two coming together as one is an awesome experience and it's something that God has designed for us. So it cannot be this man of love as we search to find out what kind it is. It cannot be miss, uh, it cannot be miss, uh, it cannot be taken for a love called philia. Thank you. Because a love called philia is a love, it's a friendship love. It means that I do for you if you do for me. Philia love is a love of reciprocity. I give you $5 if you take me to the store. Or I take you to the store if you buy me some gas. That's not the kind of love that God is talking about. When God came down to us, he came down. We were yet in our sins. He, he saw all of this, yet he died for us. God's love is unconditional. And my brothers and sisters, you have to, in your marriages and your relationships, move to this unconditional love where you just take on the spirit of God. And when you say you love a person, when they in need and you got, they got. When they need help and you can, you help. That's what the kind of love that God is calling for in this last and evil day. And then you got that Eros love. My sisters, uh, when I was in school, I used to try to teach my young ladies that there was a love. It's a real love. It compels one to give himself to the person that he loves. But he only loves you for sexual pleasures. When the sexual pleasures are over, the love is gone. So you got to understand that you are not a toy for people because people come at you. You have to test them. You can't love without giving. And these rascals will give you everything until they get the prize. Once they get the prize, they're on their way out. So you have to be careful because there's a lot of counterfeit love. But here's how God showed this kind of love that he's talking about to us. For the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, my brothers and sisters, I... God know how I feel, but, but I had a problem with that scripture. And I said, God, I said, you love me, but you sent your son. You didn't die for me. And then God said, look at first John three and 16. And it says, hereby perceive we the love of God for God laid his life down for us. In other words, it wasn't God sending his son. It was God coming as the son. The son was nothing but the flesh of God. But God was in that son, reconciling the world unto himself. So God demonstrated his love to us by dying for us. And then he looks at us and he says that we should love him. Now check this out. And man, I don't know, maybe I might have somebody that's with me or not, but in Matthew 22, verses 36 and 37, it says this, they asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said, thou shall love the Lord thy God 
with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. You know, my brothers and sisters, I struggled with that. How can you love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength, all of your mind? How can you love a God that you cannot see that way? I tried to compare my love for God with my love for my wife. Didn't measure up, just didn't measure up. I, I tried to compare the love that I had for my mama with my love for God. It just didn't measure up. My children, those things that I hold real dear, it didn't measure up. How do you love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? For we all say we love him. And then Lord spoke to me and he said, loving me has nothing to do with feelings, no emotions. Because if it's with feelings, when you feel like praising me, you praise me. And when you don't feel like it, you don't praise me. If it's feelings, when you feel like reading the word of God, you read it. And when you don't feel like it, you don't do it. Feelings has nothing to do with it. He says, those who love me are those that commit themselves to obey the words of God. You demonstrate your love to God by your commitment to obey the word of God. John 14 and 21 says that he that loveth me keepeth my commandments, and he that loveth not me keepeth not my commandments. Everything is in you finding the word of God. And whatever God says, you do. That's how you show that you love God. If you don't do what God says, then you don't love God. So you look in the Bible and you look for these scriptures. You look for the will of God. And because you love him, you do what God say do. Glory be to God. You know, God died to prove to us that he loved us. God is not asking us to die to prove to us, him, that we love him. God is asking us to live and to present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto him, holy and acceptable unto him. In other words, God want to use you to do his will on this earth. He want to use your hands to touch somebody that needs to touch. He want to use your words to minister somebody that needs to hear a word from him. The feet to run to the need of somebody that has a problem. He has made us, he has blessed us to be a blessing. Given us a car, not just for us, Luann but for the ability to give a person a ride to the, the to church, uh, to the hospital, giving us money, not just for us, but to help somebody in need. That money ain't yours. It's given to you by God, lent to you by God to do as God see fit for you to do. He's given you time that you may take time to visit your brother and your sister in the hospital. For the Bible says, you know, when you sow and invest in one another, you sow and invest in him. Glory be to God. So if I want to, you know, take the invisible God and make him visible, then I just love on one of the saints. I just help the poor. I just do exceeding and abundantly Above what is asked of me, for the Bible say, when you did it unto the least of these brothers. I wish I had somebody to hear me in my love week. You have done it unto me. So God is saying, look, if you want to show me that you love me, he said, keep my commandments. Turn to Acts, the first chapter. Acts, the first chapter, verse number one. How do I show I love God? By keeping his commandments. 
A commandment is an order, y'all, just in case you don't know. And being in Florida with all of these bases and these army people, you know what commandments are because when one guy in charge say do, they don't even ask. They turn around and they do. That's what God is asking of us. Look what he says. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that, through the Holy Ghost, has given what? Commandments. Those of us that love God keep his commandments. Those that keep it not his commandments are those of us who don't love God. Giving commandments unto the apostles whom he has chosen. What commandments did he give? Well, Matthew 28, y'all know it. He commanded them to teach the gospel to every nation and baptize. That's what he did. And then he said, and, and behold, do all that I've commanded you to do. That's what he says. In Mark 16 and 15, he says, go and teach or preach the gospel to every creature. Those that believe the gospel and is baptized shall be saved. And Luke, he says, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And in John 3 and 5, except a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. These are the commandments of God. And those of you who Listen to me and those of you who click off, you know I'm saying it all the time because I'm telling you what the Bible has said. Jesus stopped on his way to heaven to come back to tell the disciples what they should tell us of how you and I shall be saved. Now, I don't care what you're teaching. I don't care what you're preaching. I don't care what you believe. But when the final curtains comes, your love for God is going to be demonstrated on whether or not you obeyed the voice of God. And that's the word of God. When you look at Acts 2 and they, the Holy Ghost came and all of these people from all of these nations were so profound by hearing these unlearned, ignorant men speak the dialect and the language of their, their, their hometown. And they say, aren't these Gal uh, Gal Galileans? Do you hear that they speaking in our dialect, our language, the wonderful works of God? And they say, what is this? And Peter stood up and said, look, they're not really drunk as you suppose, but this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And when he poured out the spirit, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of promise, this is how he came out speaking in other tongues. Then he began to preach the gospel, the same Jesus that y'all killed, y'all crucified. God, you know, didn't suffer his body to be corrupted in hell. He came all the way down and he said, this same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. That was the gospels. And then when they asked them, say, well, men and brethren, what shall we do? They didn't say, because you believe the gospel, let me give you the right hand of fellowship. Because you believe the gospel, you already saved into, into God's rest. They didn't say nothing that we are saying today. They said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, my brothers and my sisters, the love of God compelled the disciples to say and to follow the commandments of God. Love did. They followed it unto persecution, Every one of them were killed, martyred, except John, who they attempted to boil him in a cauldron of, of oil 
and he's, he survived it and they banished him to Patmos. But every one of them, Ignatius, the one Polycar, all of these people that came after the apostles, who were taught by the apostles, were all martyred. But because they loved God, they kept the commandments of God. Now, my brothers and my sisters, the last part I want to say to you is that we saints have to demonstrate our love to saints. And God called us to witness to each other. We love each other, but we won't tell each other about the saving grace of God. Shame on you, apostolics, who refuse to tell your brothers, your sisters in business about the saving grace of God. You were called to witness. You were placed there to tell them. But we have this thing about we don't want to offend people and we don't want to say things. That's very making everybody uncomfortable. You have to remember who you are and that God says that if you love me, you keep my commandments. So when we look at the brothers and sisters, the, the Bible says in that same scripture, 1 John 3 and 16, hereby we perceive the love of God for God laid his life down for us. And then he says to the, the people, the listeners, ought we also to lay our lives down for the brethren. My brothers and sisters, we got to, we got to stop looking out for ourselves and we got to begin to look out for each other. God has called us on a mission. And if we love our brothers and sisters, we want our brothers and sisters to be treated just like we will want to be treated. And I'm going to tell you this, if I was heading to hell, Sister Deborah Glass, if I was heading to hell and you had the keys, you had the information that, would, that I needed not to end up in hell, I don't care how much it hurt me, sis, tell me. If you see me in a fault, tell me. Don't let me go down that ditch. So I know we have to be selective and I know we have to be led by the spirit, but sometimes the spirit can't lead us because we haven't prepared ourselves to be a ready voice for God. So now we need to wake up in the mornings and we need to say to God, use me, God, help me, let me tell somebody because time is so short and hell is enlarging itself daily for those that are coming into it. So my brothers and sisters, we are in a warfare and God has given us this great gift of love and we have to take it out for love that was given to us wasn't given to us to stay. For love is not love until we learn to give it away. So we have to be ready to restore our brothers. We have to be ready to restore our neighbors. And I, I say this because the Bible says that if you find that your sister or brother is in a fault, ye that are spiritual, let them restore such a one. And, and, and when a brother or sister is in the Lord and went back into sin, and some of them have turned their back on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They're in a pit, you all. We cannot afford to walk by that pit and see them down in that dungeon and don't do anything to help them. We got to get that spiritual rope. We got to take that rope and, 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 and throw that rope down and tie it around our waist and keep pulling it and telling them, man, you can make it. Come on, man, this is what the Bible is saying. Come on, man, you got to obey the gospel of Christ. Come on, man, without holiness, no man shall see God. So my brothers and sisters, we can't just have this manner of love that God has given us, but we have to, we have to be responsible for giving it to others. So when you look at me, 
you should recognize that I have my father's DNA. That man, I walk like him, I talk like him, I do what he did. You should see Jesus. That's why he put himself in us. So God is expecting us to rise up from us to this high plateau of what love brings into our lives and be able to reach and to touch our fellow man. You cannot make that vertical connection without first making the horizontal connection. Whoever you got to art with, get it together. Whoever don't like you, make another attempt because between you is heaven and hell. The words out of your mouth are life or death for them. Understand that, look, I don't want to be behind people like Joe Hewitt, people like uh, Luann, because they're going to be down there and God's just going to be calling them. Uh, Come on down, Luann. Uh, here's a reward for all the times I saw you in the hospital or uh, singing here. and say, uh -uh, uh -uh. I want you all to be waiting on me because God is coming back and he's bringing these rewards for us, for those of us who have understood what manner of love that he's bestowed upon us. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and praise you and lift you up. For God, your word is true. I don't understand yet, Lord, why you called me out of darkness into your marvelous light, but I'm grateful, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I don't understand why you gave me this woman of God, Lord, who have enhanced my life, who have taught me how two people can come together as one, but I'm grateful, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those of my friends and my families who are not yet saved, but I thank you, Lord, for the love, Lord, that you have, the same love that you gave to me and I that took us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Let that mercy and grace, Lord, be upon them and bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you all. Thank you all for hanging with me. And I'd say until next Friday at 12 noon, you guys be blessed. Keep on keeping on in Jesus' name.